So everybody, Apple did what's been inevitable since the 2015 iPad Pro, and that is give us Final Cut Pro to the iPad. And in this video, what I wanna do is give you guys just my first impressions, kind of walk you guys through the layout, the interface, how it works with Stage Manager, how it works with extended monitor support, some of the good, some of the bad that I noticed, because there is a little bit of both cams, but keep in mind, depending on who you are, you might be different on how you feel of Final Cut Pro, right? For me personally, I'm coming from editing on LumaFusion, right? I'm not a Final Cut Pro user on Mac OS, but then there's also people on Mac OS who are using Final Cut Pro on iPad who then see it in a different light. So depending on who you are, you might see this as an upgrade, a downgrade, or maybe it's as a different application that fits in your workflow in a different way. But without further ado, let's talk about Final Cut Pro because it's been a long time coming and I'm excited to test this thing out live with you guys. But let's get into it. Okay everyone, so let's get right into this video. And as you guys can see, we have Final Cut Pro downloaded. It is around 750 megabytes. And I will say that in order to use Final Cut Pro, you need an M1 or an M2 ready iPad. So that gives you the M1 and M2 iPad Pros, both the 11 and the 12.9 inch versions, as well as the M1 iPad Air. So technically the M1 iPad Air is the cheapest entry point for Final Cut Pro. Even though the $600 iPad Pro only gives you 64 gigs of RAM, it technically is the cheapest entry point for Final Cut Pro. So now that we got that out of the way, last thing I do wanna mention is that it is a subscription service and I know a lot of people are hating on it, but at the end of the day, $5 a month, I mean, most people pay $15 a month for Netflix, right? A lot of people pay $12 a month for Disney Plus. So $5 a month with a one month free trial, or if you wanna pay the full year up front, it is $50. Comparatively, Final Cut Pro on Mac OS is $300 for a one-time license fee. So you basically have six years worth of runtime on the subscription service. Before this gets more expensive than the Mac OS version, but let me open this up and we're gonna talk about, again, kind of the ins and outs, first impressions, because I've only played with it for a couple of minutes and I wanted to kind of hold off my reaction for the actual video. But here we go, Final Cut Pro. I got my Apple Pencil 2 here. I'm personally using the M1 iPad Pro, the 128 gig variant. But this is what you guys see as the opening kind of dashboard, right? So you have your left side menu right here, gives you your projects your settings, which doesn't give you too much right here, which just gives you the wheel scroll direction, which we'll get onto, the account to manage your subscriptions. And again, you do get a one month free trial, so anybody can download it from the App Store with the M1 iPad Pro or newer, and then be already in it starting to play with it. So the first thing I'm gonna actually test, let's talk multitasking real quick. So the first thing I'm gonna quickly test before we get into this right away is, does multitasking work? So if I pull this up, let's say I wanna open up the competitor LumaFusion, it's not gonna let me open up in a side-by-side -side window. So it does let you do the slide over, but side-by-side, -side, it does not let you have either two instances of the same application or a side-by-side -side view. And then another way to notice that is that you do not have the three dots up here, which most other applications have. So if I go into my Safari, I have my three dots right here to go into split view. And then if I wanna open up Final Cut Pro, it's gonna just take over the entire screen and say split view is not supported. And then when it comes to Stage Manager, let's open up Stage Manager. It does let you move around the window at least a little bit, but it doesn't let you minimize it at all. So if you do wanna open up another application, let's see if I wanna open up Safari, bring it over here. You can technically have it running in the background it looks like, but again, you cannot resize it like other applications. So if you try to resize it here, it's not letting you. Like there's a force against it. And so there's only really two sizes. There's full screen, and then there is this kind of like windowed view, but a large windowed view. So keep that in mind. You can multitask technically via stage manager, but it's very limited in the types of multitasking that you can do. So let's open that back up, go into stage manager, turn that off because I wanna go with the normal view and stick around to the end of the video because we will be testing it with an external monitor just to see what it's like. But let's go ahead and open up a new project here. I'm gonna name this one because I actually have a video to make and I actually recorded all of my footage already. So I have a video that I'm making about an accessory company for accessories for the iPad, Mac, iPhone, of course. So I'm gonna write this down here. Format, you only have two options, which is automatic or custom. If I press custom, you pretty much have your resolution. So you can go up to 4K on here or even custom as well. So you can actually decide what you want, but I'm gonna stick with 4K. You have your landscape or portrait orientation, HDR color space or SDR, and then you have your frame rate. So I like to keep it at 30 frames per second. I've done that for a very long time because it lets me go slow-mo with my 60 FPS, but to each their own. So we'll press continue. And then it's gonna ask you where you wanna import your new project files from. So you can import from photos, you can go import from files, start from complete blank, or record with the camera. I normally go import from photos because that's how I've always done it. So if I go down here, get the actual footage that I want. So let's highlight all of this. It looks like you can just highlight it the normal way that you could. And then what I'm gonna do is actually press add on the top right hand corner. So slowly it's gonna start to add everything over here as you can see. 
and it does take a second for that to happen. So this is the interface that you're dealing with. So if I want to click on here and kind of preview what I'm looking at and press play. So that is the actual viewfinder itself. So if you click around here, these are all of your clips and I believe this is the one that I want to use. So we'll press play here to make sure this is the one that I actually want to use. And you can scrub your timeline here. It's a little bit laggy in my first impression here, so it is kind of dragging behind. And again, I have the M1 version, so I do only have eight gigs of RAM. Let's close out some of these apps because the RAM is really working hard right now. Maybe that's the reason why. But if we close all these applications, go back here, will it help out a little bit? A little bit actually, yeah. So if basically with RAM management is gonna be a big deal for this iPad Pro and for Final Cut Pro. But if I wanna grab this, all I do is this. Bring it into my timeline. It is a magnetic timeline, so if you're used to anything like even LumaFusion or Final Cut Pro on Mac OS, that is what you're dealing with. And now there's multiple ways to actually scroll through your timeline. You can use your pencil to scroll through here, and it does scroll in real time. Let me turn this volume down. You then have your side wheel right here, which lets you move it around like this to be a little bit more precise. And apparently it moves it on a per frame basis. So if you wanna get real precise with it and get the frames going as precise as possible, the scroll wheel is right here for you to use. And you just press X to get out of it. And you can actually move it around similar to the way you would use your color palette in the notes application. So that's kind of how I would equate it. But instead it's your Final Cut Pro. And again, I'm coming from LumaFusion, so I'm not really expecting Final Cut Pro or my expectation of this Final Cut Pro is different than other people using the Mac OS version of Final Cut Pro thinking that's gonna come down to the iPad Pro. So it is a different version. This is a touch first interface. The iPad is touch first, it's Apple Pencil second, and then it's keyboard and mouse third versus Mac OS is point and click mouse and keyboard the entire time. So. So basically, now that we have this timeline here, you can see that you have different options of what you wanna show on the top right-hand corner of the display. So here is your photo library that you imported the files that you're working with. Then you have this little button up here, which allows you to see the actual scroll wheel. So if I click on this, you can see that it does appear. And if I click on it, it actually disappears on this side. And then you have this. So this is where you actually get the color correct, be able to add your LUTs, be able to change basically anything that you want with this clip itself. So if I wanna add the hard light here, you can see that it changes and if I actually and then as you scroll through, you do have your different kind of formats. You're able to do, add the droplet effect, your fisheye effect. You can add a time code. You can add a focus blur if you would like to. So there's multiple ways to actually change up how it looks. And then you have the ability to apply it or not. And then you do have some preset color grading. So this is actually great to have. If you do want to mess around with this, you can to add some sort of color grading. And then you, obviously you can just apply it if you want to. And then that's what you're gonna be seeing moving forward. So obviously I'm not gonna keep it like this, but just to show you, you do have the ability to add transitions. And what I'm doing here is actually downloading everything so it's easy for me to actually start using. Because by default, even though this is a 750 megabyte download, a lot of it is not kind of preloaded onto here. So it's gonna probably take up a decent amount of space on your actual iPad. So make sure you have enough space. Like I said, I only have the 128 gig version. So that's pretty much everything that we have on the display itself or on the actual dashboard and the interface. So you have your viewfinder on the left here. You have everything else in terms of how to edit the actual footage that you're editing on the right hand side. And then you have obviously your timeline down here. You have a couple other options that I want to walk through. So you do have the inspect option here. So it allows you to change the clip speed, the opacity of the clip. So if I do one of these, it'll go kind of lower. You have the ability to then actually transform it from a scale perspective if you want to. So if I want to make this smaller or bigger, I can do that as well. You also have your volume control, so you can add more decibels, reduce decibels. And then you have obviously the additional effects that you have on here. So if I go again back into here, add a little hard light, apply it, you can see that the hard light is now added into the effect and to actually remove it, you just disable it or reset it. You can actually just disable or enable it, which I'm gonna disable it. And then you can just swipe to the left and add it to the trash and you can also add effects from there. So there's multiple ways to play around with this overall. And then you do have a couple of other options on the top here. So like I mentioned earlier, you have the ability to turn off and on the scroll wheel, which you can mess around with if you would like to. I'm gonna get out of the inspect section. You can mess with the volume over here. You can actually animate. You can add a multicam view, which is great to see. Then you do have these buttons up here. So the first one I'm gonna go is with this one. So I'm able to actually add maybe like a little Super Saiyan action here, or a little aura if I want to. Write hello, press done and then it will automatically do that for me. So if I press play, you can see that it is animating in real time, which is awesome to see. I can see a lot of people getting extremely creative with this, which is something that I'm personally gonna be doing a lot of to kind of point stuff out, animate a little bit better, and make it just so people are just more engaged overall. And I can see this being a great feature for people that run webinars, that people that run you know Zoom calls or classes over Zoom and things like that. 
And then you also have the ability to use a camera. So if you want to, you can actually use a camera and record in real time. So I'm gonna do one of these. I'm gonna press allow while using app. And if I lift this up, I can actually then switch over. And then you can see that the camera is right above there. So you can add slow-mo, you can change the actual exposure, you can change how light it is. So the white balance, change all that up, record it and then add it directly on there. You can change if it's HD, if it's 720, if it's HD again, again, I'm using the front facing camera, but if I switch to the rear facing camera, you get your 4K 30 right there. You get all the options again still here. You can add a flash. So you can automatically add whatever clip you want by just recording it with the rear or the front camera as well, which I think is a very cool little add on overall. So another thing that I wanted to show off was extended monitor support. So like I said, I have the M1 iPad Pro right here. Then I have my extended monitor. I'm not connecting it through anything besides a direct Thunderbolt cable. We're gonna plug it in and kind of just see what happens here. So if I kind of let it do its thing, stage manager should take over pretty quickly and boom. There you can see that stage manager is working. And then all of a sudden, those three dots that I mentioned earlier that were missing are now here. So if I wanna grab this and move it to the display, now I got Final Cut Pro rolling on the display itself, which is awesome. So in terms of making it bigger or smaller, I can enlarge it pretty big. Can I go full screen? It doesn't let me go full screen, which is kind of interesting, kind of a weird play. But if I want to grab, let's say, Twitter over here, grab Twitter, be able to move over here, make this a little bit smaller. So I have Twitter on the left hand side. Maybe if I go back down here, maybe add a Safari window if I want to. So that works. Maybe if I go down here, maybe open up a file and see if I can just drag and drop a file into here. That would be kind of interesting. So if I want to grab, let's say this file right here and bring it into Final Cut Pro, it actually doesn't let you bring it in. There's a little circle down there that says you cannot do it. So that's very interesting. So if I go back down here and maybe grab something from my camera roll. So let me grab the camera. So if I grab my camera roll and let's see if something does let me import. So if I grab this, will it let me import it into here? It does not look like it's letting me import it anywhere on the screen right here. So what if I go back here, grab something else, maybe grab this guy, try to move it in there. There we go. So it does let me move it, it looks like. Maybe where did it go? Okay, there it go. Now it's importing that one item. So the only way to import something is either directly from the Files app and it has to be a video or directly from the photo library and the project media needs to be open and then you can kind of click and drag it and move it over here. So overall, it does seem to work. I mean, if, if you wanna try some hotkeys, like maybe Control B or Apple B, it does cut. If I wanna delete it, it does delete it. If I wanna undo, Apple Z. So the familiar keys are there, and if you long press on the actual Apple logo or the Apple button, it does give you all the different shortcuts that you can use. They are not remappable. As somebody coming from Final Cut Pro on Mac OS, which I'm not that person, people were saying that you can actually map your shortcuts to do whatever you want manually, versus somebody coming from LumaFusion, which is that somebody is me, I, I'm used to the shortcuts being predefined and unmappable. So if you're used to your shortcuts on LumaFusion, then this is gonna work the same exact way. And the scrolling works, which is good to see. You can move up and down. You have, like I said, your multicam is on, but you can turn that off. The scroll wheel still works here with the trackpad, which is cool to see. I just wish you could go full screen on here. So if I wanna enter full screen mode, what happens? It kind of just kicks everything out of the way and then lets me maybe drag this up a little bit bigger, but this is as big as it gets. If I try to extend it sideways, it doesn't let me extend sideways. So there's a lot of stuff going on, but if I want to maybe press this button right here and if I want to animate again, okay, you just hold down on the mouse and then it starts working. We'll press done, press play real quick to see what happens. And then you'll see that it does animate right there like I showed earlier. So to each their own, there are some pros, there are some cons with this, but this is gonna be a learning curve overall for Final Cut Pro. So this is just my first impression video. I wanted to walk everybody through the main questions that they had, but for a full tutorial and maybe some new features and my top feature sets, definitely subscribe for more. So that's gonna wrap up this video, everybody. Like you saw, Final Cut Pro is officially here. Is it the same as Final Cut Pro on Mac OS? No, it is not. But there's a lot of good that came from Final Cut Pro, in my opinion. Some pro level Final Cut Pro users are gonna be like, hey, maybe there's not enough, this is just a watered down version. But then people maybe that use iMovie on their iPad are gonna see this and be like, wow, this is a huge upgrade, this is gonna change the way that I edit video. So again, it just depends on how you look at Final Cut Pro and what it's gonna do for you in your workflow. So definitely stay subscribed because we're gonna be doing a lot more in-depth analysis on Final Cut Pro, doing a one week later, comparing it to LumaFusion, comparing it to other video editors in the iPad world because Final Cut Pro has been absolutely amazing. And then finally, as I mentioned earlier, you do need an M-Level 
level iPad to be able to use this. So M1 iPad Pro, M2 iPad Pro, and then M1 iPad Air. Will it come to other iPads? Maybe in the future it will, but for right now, Apple wants to keep this with the more powerful iPads just in case there are some hiccups. But overall, like I said, a lot of good, not really any bad, but more so maybe some things missing overall. But again, this is just version 1.0, and we all know how Apple just likes to iterate on what they do and make it better and better overall for your experience. But that's gonna do it, everybody. Leave a comment down below of what you think of Final Cut Pro. Is that $50 a year price tag too much for you? So let me know with a comment down below what you think overall. But if you did make it to the end, leave a little dolphin in the comments down below so I know you made it to the end. And if you guys want to watch some more iOS, macOS, or iPadOS videos, click on one of these right here. And until next time, I'm Fernando. I'm out of here, everybody. Peace.